certainly good to be here this evening. Y'all are a good group of folks, you know that? I don't care what your pastor says about you. You're some good people. Well, the meal this morning was outstanding. He's done nothing but brag on you, in case you're wondering. The meal was outstanding this morning. The fellowship was outstanding. Uh, I certainly thank everyone for the hospitality. I thank you for the opportunity to be here again and preach God's Word. Everyone's been asking about our kids uh, this evening. and uh, Kinsley's been asking all day long if she could go to church with Nana and Papa. So this evening we said, yeah, you can go to church with them. And so then uh, the grandmother, Brittany's mom, she said, well, what about the other one? Take him too. I don't care. <laughs> so they got both of them tonight. So Brittany's got a night off. So right before we walked in, she said, where are we going to sit? I said, well, I guess over there in the back row. And then we sat down. I said, we don't have any kids. We could have sat wherever we wanted to do. We like to be real close so we can get out the door real quick if need be. But uh, we sat on the back row anyway. But all that being said, I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you this evening. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. What will you do with the truth? What are you going to do with the truth? The Apostle Paul writing to the Romans here, he, he speaks of a group of people, and I'll just go ahead and give you the, the couple of points in here. These people knew God. They knew who He was. They knew about Him. They knew what His Word said. They knew Him. But then they changed God. Not only that, then they forgot God. Oops. I hope and pray that is certainly not us, but if you fit this group of people this evening, that means you're lost. You're lost. Don't leave this building the same way. As your pastor said a moment ago, when we reach the back doors tonight, we ought to be different than when we That's showed right. up. I agree with that. I, I agree completely, 100%. That being said, stand with me as we read from God's Word. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Because that when they knew God... They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. That's a sad, sad group of people. Sad group of people. Let's pray real quick. Our Father in heaven, we come to you this evening, and it's certainly been some good singing, good fellowship. I certainly enjoyed my time here. I know we got a couple more days. I'm looking forward to it. But Father, as we look into your word tonight, I know that if it's your word, every one of us need it. I know it will apply to every one of us. And we may look at some of these uh, descriptions in here and say, well, that doesn't fit me. I'm saved. Father, sometimes we do stretch, the, stretch things a little bit to not be so convicted about it. Father, I pray that if there's one here this evening that maybe needs to rededicate, maybe they need salvation, maybe scriptural baptism, maybe just need to get closer to you, a closer walk with you, Lord, we can all use one. I do pray that those decisions will be made this evening before we leave this building. Thank you for the opportunity to bring your word. I do ask that you'll hide me behind Calvary's cross that people can see you and not me. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. you. You may be seated. All that being said, we'll back up to verse 18. We just read there in verse 21, they knew God. But verse 18 of the same chapter, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who do what? Hold the truth in unrighteousness. The wrath of God is revealed. That's not good. That's not good. If, if, if you and I are going to ever suffer the wrath of God, that is not a good thing. I'm thankful that I'm saved. I'm thankful I won't have to uh, uh, fear where I go whenever I die. Amen. Folks, I, I'm not worried about death. And that being said, I've, I've said this many times behind the pulpit, with, with the way my life is now, I certainly hope I don't die soon. I've got a young family, a lot of things going, but if I do, I'm not scared about where I'm going. Right. I, I hate it for them. They may be glad. I certainly <laughs> hope not. But, but folks, at the same time, I don't fear where I'm headed. That's right. 
But he says here, the wrath of God, Paul writing to these folks, he says, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? Ungodliness. Against what else? Unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They hold the truth. If you're holding on to something, what does that mean? I've got it. If I'm holding this bottle of water, I've got it. It's within my grasp. I've got it. I've got control of it. I've got a hold of it. It's right here with me. And so these people that Paul is writing about, he says they're holding the truth. They've got it. It's right there with them. Where are they holding it? As it says there, last part of verse 18, in unrighteousness. Folks, there are a lot of people. I asked you a moment ago, the title this evening, what will you do with the truth? There's a lot of people that hear the truth of God's Word, but they don't like it. Whenever I read the Word of God, I love God's Word. I love what's inside of it, but it does not always make me feel good. When I read God's Word, it's like a mirror. I can see my imperfections. I can see what's wrong with me. And I know I've got things I've got to correct because I know God is superior. I know God's Word is true. I know God's Word is right. I need to line up with it. As a preacher said once before, he said, this is the straight edge. And what do you do with the straight edge? It's used to cut a straight line. Or to mark a straight line. And God's Word is the straight line. I need to line up with it. If I'm out of line with God's Word, I'm the one that needs to change. I'm the one that needs fixed. And whenever we, we admit that, that means I'm not the boss. God is. Amen. But typically, we like to be the boss. I like to be in charge of what I'm doing. I want to be in charge of my life. I want to call the shots. But whenever I admit, God, you're superior. God, you are God. God, you're the one I worship. You're the one I read about and study about. You're the one that my life revolves around. You're the center. That means I'm not in charge. And some people don't like that. Sometimes I don't like that. And sometimes I read God's Word. There's some tough messages in this book. But it's God's Word. I know it's right. He says that who hold the truth in unrighteousness, verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. What does that mean? Maybe we can read a little bit farther get the answer. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. I've heard this many times. I agree with it. <laughs> and there's Scripture to back it up. If you don't agree with uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 20 here, go read Romans or, uh, Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6. Backs this up perfectly. How do I know God exists? Folks, look around you. Mm -hmm. Look around you. You ever look up at the stars at night and say, man, there's got to be something more powerful than me out there. You look at creation and just how beautiful it is. One thing, since I've, I've had children, I'm just like, look at how God created the human body. It, it is incredible. Folks, when, when, you, when you stop and just slow down and look at things a little bit, and you say, man, it, there's no way. This, this did not happen by some big bang. This didn't just all of a sudden happen from evolution over years and years and years. There's got to be a designer behind this. There's right. got to be somebody who created this behind it. Behind all of this, it's remarkable how the human body works, how the universe works, how everything fits together. And whenever you look at God's Word and you read God's Word and you see how it fits into our daily lives and how things come together, folks, it makes sense to me. And I believe the Word of God. I believe God created all of this. And I believe that God set all right. this in motion by His power. I believe that. And so that being said, verse 20, for the invisible things of the world which are clearly seen, from the creation of the world which are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Yeah. They are without excuse. I've heard the argument before, well, what about somebody over in Timbuktu that's never heard of the name of Christ? Well, folks, the best explanation of faith I've ever heard, it's a response to God. Faith is a response to God. 
God has revealed himself. If they've never heard of the Bible or Jesus Christ, he's revealed himself through creation. Now, how they respond to that, here's the beauty of it. Some people may say, well, how do you know if they're saved or not? I don't draw that line. I can't see their heart. Yeah. I'm glad God knows. And Amen. I know it. But folks, same way with us right here tonight. There's not one person in here I can definitively say, you're saved. Yeah. Why? I can't see your heart. And likewise, you with me. You cannot say 100%. Now, look at her. I'll use Brother Cody, for example. I don't doubt his salvation. But I cannot say, you're saved, you're headed to heaven. Why? That's his decision, not mine. I cannot see his heart. Right. You can't see mine. And so as far as all of this goes, uh, God is simply saying, humanity is without excuse. Mm -hmm. Humanity is without excuse. How have they responded to what I've revealed to them? Because that, verse 21, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. How often do we glorify God for who He is? How often do we give God the credit for who He is? Yeah, of course, we, we thank Him for meals and we thank Him for waking us up and so on and so forth. How often do we glorify God? What does that word mean? To shine the light on Him. How often do we give Him the honor, the glory, the credit for the things that He's done for us? They were without excuse when they knew God. They glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain. What does vain mean? Empty, worthless, meaningless. They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Folks, what does is, what is all this mean? What is this leading to? They knew the truth. They heard the truth. There's a lot of people that will sit through some preaching today. They hear the truth. They know the truth. They know God's Word. They know what God expects. Folks, I'm guilty of some of this stuff. I know what God expects. I don't always do what God expects. I know what God wants. I know what God desires. How often do I 100% of the time do what He wants? Yeah. I'm guilty. I'm probably not the only one guilty in here. Maybe so. If I am, that's great for y'all. I need to be on the altar. As we all do, I'm confident. But folks, here's the thing. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. What did Paul say to the Corinthians? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. Does that mean lost folks? Foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. Big difference there. Lost people look at what we believe. They look at the they look at creation. They look at the Word of God. They'll say, well, this, this book was written by men. Best analogy I think I've ever heard. Anybody know what a pen is or a pencil? Nobody knows. Oh, Kinsley's got mine. I'll show you all what a pen is. You're right with it. A pen will not do anything you don't want it to do. That's right. That's how God worked when he was writing this book. Yeah, he may have used 40 different men to do it. But you know what? They wrote what God told them to write. Right. They were the pen that God used to write his word. That was a joke a minute ago. Nobody laughed up. We need to hurry up and get done. With it. <laughs> anyway, folks, this is God's word. Pro right. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The world looks at what we believe and says, that's foolishness, you're crazy. The world looks at creation and they say, would y'all believe God created this in six days and rested on the seventh? They said, you're crazy. Yeah. This is the result of evolution. To which I say, y'all are crazy. Yeah. Folks, that's the reality of the matter that we live in. They knew God. They heard the truth. They didn't like it. Why? If I admit the Bible's right, God's the boss. That's right. Not me. They knew God. They didn't like it. So verse 23, they changed God. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. Mm -hmm. Uncorruptible. I love that word. God has no faults. That's right. God has no sin. His son lived on this earth for over three decades without sin. That's right. I can't go a day. I say I can't. I choose not to go a day. Nobody makes me sin. Whenever I fall short, it's my fault every time. Yep. 
But God's son did it. It is possible. I choose not to. All that being said, they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man <coughs> and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. What does that mean? What they do? They made themselves God. They said, I don't want God to be God. I want to be God. Verse 24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. What does that mean? God gave them uh, uh, up to that. What does that mean? He honored their choice. If you don't want to serve God, He won't force you. If you don't want to accept His Son, He will not force you to do so. If you don't want to come to church, God's not going to make you come. He receives honor and glory when we choose to serve Him of our own free will. Amen. That's when God is honored. That's when God is glorified. But these people here, this group of people, that sometimes I unfortunately fit the same category. They said, I, I, I'm, I'm more worried about myself than I am God. I'm going to worship myself today. You ever skip church to go fishing or hunting or so on and so forth, anything like that? You fit that category. Anything that comes between you and God, anything that's more important than God, we fit this category. Right. Folks, when we think of it that way, it's a little more humbling. It, it's so easy to a lot of times read through the Bible and say, well, those are some terrible people. But whenever we think about modern day examples, we say, man, I'm a terrible person. Yeah. And he says in verse 25, who changed the truth of God. So verse 23, they changed the glory of God. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie. I've got a, a man who's on our church road, and some of his family has informed me of this. He, he came to church not too long ago to surprise his mom. If, if you come to church to surprise family, you're, you're uh, uh, that's your pastor. <laughs> Folks, that's awful. Yeah. My goodness. Hmm. That's lazy. That is lazy. And his mom was surprised. Yeah. Surprise her at the house. Stop by and say, hey, mom, I love you, or something like that. Maybe yeah. that would surprise That'd be a better surprise. Don't surprise her at church. You ought to be there every Sunday. Right. Right. But that being said, Amen. anyway, uh, his stepdad has informed me of some of the things that he's done over the last couple of years. And he's gone to many different denominations and cowboy churches and providence and so on and so forth. And he treats doctrine like a buffet. Yeah. He gets what he wants and what he don't want, he just leaves it there. Mm. Folks, it doesn't work that way. That's right. Uh, we don't teach the same as what a lot of other denominations teach. Mm. And so when you take what you want from this one and take what you want from that one and take what you want from another one, you've got a mess. Yeah. Well, what's right and what's wrong? Let's go to the straight edge and figure yeah. it out. Amen. But folks, there's a lot of people that fit the same thing. They changed the truth of God into a lie, verse 25, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. Mm. Wow. Let's read all that again. They worshipped and served the creature, maybe we could say the creation, yeah. more than the Creator who is blessed forever. That would be like me taking my vehicle to a mechanic, having the motor rebuilt, and then just saying, boy, that motor is so good and so good and so good, and just bragging on the motor and, and, and making a God, if I can say it that way, out of the motor and never even acknowledging the mechanic that rebuilt yeah. it. Yeah. That wouldn't make a lick of sense. Mm -hmm. I should say, boy, you did a good job on that motor. <laughs> Same way with creation. Lord, you did a good job yeah. on this stuff. Yeah. Folks, they worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, verse 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. God gave them up. What does that mean? He honored their choice. He's not going to force people to serve Him. He's not going to force people uh, into church. He's not going to force you. Why? He wants you to choose Him. That being said, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use 
into that is which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Almost makes you wonder if Paul was writing prophecy here of what's taking place today. Folks, I'll, I'll tell you straightforward now. A woman should never be with a woman. That's right. A man should never be with a man. Right. What, what did I say a moment ago? When you change God, you wind up with a mess. Yep. When God becomes a, a buffet, when God's word is a buffet, I'll take what I want. When I don't want, I'm going to leave it there for somebody else. You've got a mess. And what do we have today? We've got a mess. We've got a bad mess. How do we change it? Getting right with the Word of God. Amen. Lining back up with the straight edge that we've got. Getting back in line with God. Having a closer walk with God. That's how we fix things. And it starts right here with us tonight. Folks, Amen. I've said this a bunch of times. I probably told you last year in revival. You cannot expect a lost person to live like and act like a saved person. Right. But whenever saved people act like lost people, you'll never lead anybody to the Lord. Right. And nothing's going to change. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. This mess will grow bigger and bigger. God can make a masterpiece out of a mess, though. I want you Amen. to know that. He can change things. I've seen that in my life so many times. Uh, uh, I'll make a, a different decision to go another direction, not away from God, but God blesses. Or maybe I do make a mess out of some things. God makes it into something awesome. Yeah. That's what He does. It, it, it amazes me. It shouldn't amaze me, but it does. How God can take things that I've done and turn it into something so amazing. And I, all I've got to do is sit there and say, Lord, I couldn't have done that. You did that. Amen. Hey. Folks, we've got a mess. And unfortunately, we've got a lot of people that say, well, let the kids choose. Let the kids yeah. choose. Let the kids choose. You know what Solomon said about kids? Foolishness <laughs> is bound in the heart of a child. Yeah. Foolishness. Go read the book of Proverbs. Foolishness is bound. It's wound up. It's tight in there. It's stuck in the heart of a child. What does that mean? They're not very smart. That's what it means. Kids make bad choices. Yeah. Folks, and we live in a world that says, well, let the kids choose. They're going to choose wrong every time. Yeah. Every time. We ask kids a lot of times, what do you want for supper? Half the time, the answer is cookies and milk. <laughs> You're not going to get that. What else you want? Pizza. You had pizza three nights in a row. So let's try something else. She, she makes four choices, but you know why? She's three. But you know what? Even when she's eight, she's probably still not going to be making great choices. You know why? She's a kid. Now, many of y'all here have raised kids, and they're up around my age and stuff. You could tell me a lot more than what I can tell you. But I know the Bible's true. Amen. It says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. The reality of the matter is, I guess we've got a lot of adults running around that don't have a lot of common sense well, either. We're, we're in this mess. We're in a mess. That's right. We need the Lord. That's the truth. What are we going to do with the truth tonight? He says in verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. What does that mean? I want to forget this stuff. They knew God. They heard the truth. They knew the truth. Perfect example, I use him all the time, is Nicodemus. Go read John chapter 3. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. He said, we know you are sent from God. We know. We know it. You're sent from God. But folks, here's the thing. He was a Pharisee. It says right there in verse 1 of John chapter 3. He was a Pharisee. He admitted the Pharisees, we know you're sent from God. Right. You're not just another man. You're somebody special. But so many rejected Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even though they knew the truth. They knew the truth. But they didn't want the truth. Therefore, they changed the truth. They made it into a lie. Now, all we've got to do is forget it. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge... God gave them over to a reprobate mind 
to do those things which are not convenient. Reprobate. What does that word mean? Abandoned to sin. That's Webster's 1828 dictionary. Abandoned to sin, lost to virtue or grace. Somebody who's heard the truth and heard the truth and heard the truth, Judas. Judas. He listened to Jesus for over three years. Had the best pastor, best preacher, best teacher, best friend a man could ever ask for. And he was lost. He was lost. Well, maybe he was gone every time Jesus talked. No, he heard it just as well as anybody else. He rejected it. Didn't want it. Verse 29. These people being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. What is that word? Malicious. Extreme hatred or ill will. Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. Malignity, what is that? <coughs> Extreme evilness of nature. Whisperers, <coughs> backbiters, haters of God. Haters of God. What's to hate about God? I guess the fact that he's boss and I'm not. Yeah. Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, Covenant breakers without natural affection. Implacable. Implacable. What does that mean? Enmity not to be subdued. What does that mean? The enemy of God. But it's to the extent that it cannot be and will not be subdued. They've heard the truth. They've changed the truth. They hate God. They want to make their own truth and just forget God. Implacable. Unmerciful. Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God. Folks, these, are, these people know some things. Who knowing the judgment of God. They know what the Bible says. They know what the future holds. They, they, they know exactly what's coming. They know. Knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Yeah. Folks, how could you know all of that and still live that way? That's sad. Yeah. That is so sad. But you know what? Our country is full of them. Mm -hmm. Full of them. We live in a wonderful area of the country. It doesn't seem to be much of a problem. I have no clue what 20 years from today looks like, but I bet it's not real good. They know the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Absolutely no fear of God. That's right. Folks, they heard the truth. They knew it. They knew it. They knew God. They changed God. Mm -hmm. How often are we guilty of the same things? We change things. We twist things a little bit. I went to seminary with a man. He used to preach hard. Uh, as far as a, a pastor, he needs to be the husband of one wife till they went through a divorce. He changed the way he believed so he could keep pastoring. I'm not asking where you stand on that. If you want to know where I stand, ask me at the back tonight, I'll tell you. But folks, when we change what we believe based on the way life goes, we're not lining up with the straight edge. Right. The straight edge does not change. It's always straight. Yeah. Whenever I don't line up, I'm the one that needs to change. Mm -hmm. Folks, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. I ask you tonight, what will you do with the truth? Chances are, you know what God wants. You know what God expects. And you're here at church. Yep. That's great. Folks, it doesn't stop there. There's more to serving the Lord than just showing up. Mm -hmm. The Great Commission, 
that we often speak about, it's not, it, it's not being fulfilled right now. Yeah. Right now, here inside this building, the Great Commission, it, it's not doing, it's, it's not going. It's not doing anything. Coming to church does not fulfill the Great Commission in any way, shape, or form. We need to assemble. We ought to assemble. God expects us to assemble. Every opportunity we have to assemble with God's right. people, we need to be here. That's right. But the work really takes place when we leave here. Amen. What are you going to do with the truth? There's millions of people in our country that don't want the truth. I promise you, I've got some in my family. I've got some in my family that fit this last part very well. Folks, you might have too. I've got folks that fit this. They need to hear the Word of God. Amen. What if they don't want it? Keep giving it to them. Amen. They want to keep throwing it in the trash. That's on them. Mm -hmm. Keep letting them hear it. Amen. What are you going to do with the truth? Folks, if the Lord wants you to make a, a change, change tonight. Amen. Change tonight. And tell your church here, say, hey, I, I'm going to change. I want to change. Hold me accountable. That's what we don't like. We don't like accountability. But you know what? When we're held accountable, things change. That's right. That's when differences are made. Tell your church about it. Not only can they hold you accountable, they want to celebrate with you. Amen. They want to say, well, praise God. And you might be the one that makes somebody else say, I need to change That's too. Right. You're not the only one. I need to as well. Folks, yes. make that choice tonight. If you're here and you're lost, the Lord's here and He's still in the saving business. He's ready to save anybody who's willing to call on His name. That's right. If you need rededication, do it and let your church know tonight. Say, hey, I've rededicated. I want to do better. And I want you to hold me accountable. Hey. Folks, whatever the Lord wants, let Him have His way. Be prepared for invitation. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you tonight and we know that you love us. But I know there's a lot of people that don't love you back. Father, you've done so much for us. You've given your son for us. The only thing you ask in return is our service, our lives. Father, our service to you compared to the sacrifice of Christ is nothing. It's nothing. We ought to want to serve you if we're saved. We ought to feel obligated to serve you if we're saved. Father, if there's one here tonight that's lost, I pray they don't leave this building lost. I pray that man, that woman, that child, whoever it is, will accept you before it's eternally too late. If rededications need to take place, tonight's a perfect opportunity. I pray it does. If we need scriptural baptisms, Father, tonight's a good time to surrender to your will, whatever it might be. I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let it go.